VCU basketball is on the air, live from the Siegel Center. The VCU Rams will look to get back on the winning track as they host the Dolphins of Jacksonville University. Great to be with you here tonight, Sean Robinson, along with Ed Nixon. And let's talk about our players to watch, starting with Jacksonville. Okay, Kevion Nolan. He is the engine for Jacksonville. He can score at all three levels, three, mid-range, layup. If VCU wants to have some success, they have to limit his ability to impact the game. And when you're talking about VCU, it's the star straw that stirs the drink, and that's Ace Baldwin. <laughs> Absolutely. Ace Baldwin is first and foremost a floor general and a leader. But as of late, he's been able to fill, fill, fill up the bucket. He uh, dropped 28 against Vanderbilt, and he's averaging 22 within the last two games. So I uh, look forward to him having a big game. This is going to be a great matchup to watch. Remember, he's doing this with two screws in his wrist. Was named A-10 Player of the Week after that performance that Ed just talked about, a career-high 28 against Vanderbilt the last time the Rams were home, and also 16 on the road at Temple. Now let's talk about our pregame keys to the game presented by CarMax. Okay, so for Jacksonville, they have to limit their turnovers. VCU wants to score buckets off their turnovers. And also, they have the size advantage, especially with uh, Deloach being out of this game. They have to dominate the boards on both ends. And for VCU? And VCU, they also want to limit their turnovers. They're averaging around 17 a game. They're going to have to limit that if they want to be successful and also limit Jacksonville's second chance points opportunities. Is VCU and Jacksonville coming up next on Rams Unlimited. Almost tip-off here at the Siegel Center. Sean Robertson along with Ed Nixon, a member of the 2011 Final Four team. Jacksonville comes in with a record of 4-2. and two. VCU at 5-3. and three. And here are the starting lineups for the Rams. As Ed mentioned, Toby Lawal getting the start tonight in place of Jalen Deloach, who is out with an undisclosed illness. Watkins, Baldwin, Nunn, and Brandon Johns, the rest of VCU's starting five. For Jacksonville, they'll go with Kevion Nolan, the key, the player to watch for Jacksonville, along with J.C. Powell, Jordan Davis, Mike Marsh, and Osai Osifo, the starting five for Jacksonville. Head coach Jordan Mincy in his second season. Mike Rhodes in his sixth season at VCU. Lawal and Marsh will jump it up at center court. And we're underway with VCU controlling the opening tip. Now, VCU is going to have to pick up the slack now that uh, Deloach is out of the game. He is their leading rebounder. And talking to the people from Jacksonville last night, that will be a, a key aspect of the game as Toby Lawal gets inside and scores the game's first two. Now, I, I, I spoke to Toby. I've seen Toby play over the offseason. He is more than ready for this opportunity. First career start for the freshman. That's going to be a backcourt as the four-court pressure applied on by Jaden Nunn on Jordan Davis, a transfer from Dayton by way of Middle Tennessee State, who's had some action against VCU in his career with the Flyers and also Anthony Grant, the head coach there. Yeah, so he should be the most used to, <laughs> the most comfortable with this pressure, but there's nothing comfortable about VCU's pressure. Rams with an early 2-0 lead just underway here in the first half. Great to have you with us on Rams Unlimited. Here's Brandon Johns, the move on Osifo, and he scores to give VCU a four-point lead. Now look at this from VCU. Look at their approach. Two possessions, both drop down to the post, two post scores. Trying to get those big men in foul trouble as Jacksonville is huge on the front line. Davis going up against Watkins. They look to Marsh against Lawal. Tend to shoot for Jacksonville. Marsh is called for travel. We mentioned the size. Marsh is 6'11. Osifo is 6'8. And that's a huge front line right there. We haven't seen a guy probably that size against VCU this year as Mike Rose showing the offensive signals. Trying to get a 6 0 start from VCU offensively. Watkins in and out on the three and Marsh the rebound for Jacksonville. And how about this? Marsh used to be bigger. <laughs> he came, he left high school 330 pounds. And he went to Juco route and ended up losing that, losing that weight, bought into the system. And now he's 240. Still a huge human. Huge man. <laughs> Here's Powell fading away. Watkins up high with the rebound for VCU. Something that Coach Mike Rhodes talked about was limiting the opportunities 
for Jacksonville, and Jay Nunn has gotten VCU off to a 6-0 run. Big game for him against Temple on Sunday as he had 14 points coming off of a scoreless game against Vanderbilt. And if VCU wants to have success throughout the season, they're definitely going to have to get Jay Nunn involved as much as they can. Here's Marsh with a good move on the baseline for Jacksonville's first two. Marsh, the redshirt junior from Columbia, averaging almost 12 and a half a night for Jacksonville, has them on the board 6-2. Here's Johns, good move down low, blocked inside by Osifo, and Marsh the rebound for Jacksonville. Head coach Mike Rose wanted a foul, giving it to Bill Covington, one of the three officials tonight. Ball is loose. Marsh races it down on the baseline, got stripped, gets it back, and scores. And great effort by VCU there, but a good job by Jacksonville for sticking with it. Ball went for three. Halfway down and Osifo the rebound for Jacksonville as they scored the last four. And with a basket here, can tie it. A three will give them the lead. And this is going to be an exciting game. Two teams that have the goal and identity of defense but want to play at two different speeds. Osifo from the free throw line. Baldwin the rebound for VCU. And we talked about that last night as well. How many more Rams other than the front court guys will crash the glass? Here's Watkins for three. One and done on the offensive end as Nolan grabs it for Jacksonville. And that is what Jacksonville wants to do. They want to limit VCU to getting one shot up, getting the rebound, and, and slowing the game down and controlling the pace. Almost four minutes gone by in the opening half. Nolan inside misses. Osifo misses. And Marsh, the offensive rebound and put back. Two cracks on the glass, and we got a tie game at six. Marsh is averaging five rebounds tonight, as I mentioned, almost 12 and a half points per game. Here's Baldwin inside, hit the floor hard as Osifo draws the foul. And Baldwin is still down on the baseline on the first media timeout. 15.46 to go in the first half. Tied is six with Baldwin shooting free throws when we come back. There's a good look at the Jacksonville bench. And head coach Jordan Mincy in his second season with the Dolphins, the reigning Joe B. Hall award winner. That goes to the best first-year coach in Division I college basketball. 25-12 and 12 is career mark at Jacksonville, and he's brought some new energy down with the Dolphins program. Absolutely. New energy, new players, new system, new success. They felt as if they were uh, they were went away from winning the conference last year, and they felt like this is their year to win it, and so does other teams in the conference. They're picked to finish second in the Atlantic Sun the Conference. Two teams that are respected in their two conferences. VCU number top three in the A-10 when the preseason poll came out. Ace ball one at the line to shoot two. Leading scorer on the team this season. We go back to that last foul and the hard hit by Osifo on Baldwin. And we spoke about this off camera. VCU has continued to attack like, uh, to attack like that. They're going to take some bumps. They're going to take some bruises. But in order to have success, you have to put pressure on those bigs. You put pressure on the refs to make the right call. Baldwin split a pair of free throws, coming in averaging just over 77% from the line. This season, VCU back ahead 7-6. to six. It shows some pressure. Christian Furman now in the game for VCU, replacing the wall, along with David Shriver. Sees his first action. 10 to shoot for the Dolphins. Marsh against Baldwin with 5 to shoot. Skip ahead to Nolan for 3. In and, and out and back in. And that's what he can do. That was a good defensive possession by VCU, but just a better offense by Jacksonville. The transfer from Sanford has given Jacksonville a two-point lead on his first basket. Watkins left open. Rebound to Powell for Jacksonville. VCU has not made a, free th a field goal in almost three minutes with Jacksonville ahead by two. And, and with that, you have you have to be happy with that because they're getting good opportunities. It's not like they're running bad offense. Everything looks good. They're just not knocking the shots down at the moment.
Baldwin gives it to Shriver. Nice look inside to Furman, and he lost it. That would be a tough catch by Furman. This is the first Ram turnover here on the night. Jacksonville with a two-point lead. Almost six minutes gone by in the opening half. Nolan, the team's leading scorer, gives to Powell. Shot clock is at 10. Baldwin with the deflection and steal. His defensive instincts are out of this world. One of the nation's leaders in that category this season. And he has it against Davis. Shriver for three. Tried to draw a foul and out of bounds to Jacksonville. Coach Mike Rose and Shriver both thought that Shriver's elbow got hit. And Pat O'Connell, along with Bill Covington and Sean Hull, the three officials tonight. Rose not liking that call at all. Not at all. Now, was that a good shot? No. However, however, if someone gets fouled, you're still expecting the call to be made. Shriver's trying to get back on track. The transfer from Hartford, who was one of the top three-point shooters in the country when he was at Hartford, is in a slump shooting from distance, and he's trying to get that touch back. Absolutely. And you don't want to force it, but you want to step into each shot with confidence. Shot clock is under 10 now for Jarius Cook. And a three-pointer nailed by Nolan again. Six for Nolan. And Jacksonville has their largest lead at five. And again, good defense. Ace Baldwin's right there in the pocket, but just a better shot by Nolan. Shriver again from distance. Long rebound picked up by Shriver. Goes glass and no good. Tip back to Nolan for Jacksonville. 12-7, Jacksonville with the lead in the midst of a 12-1 run in almost five minutes. Inside to Marsh, who slams it home. And this, and this is where Nolan is so dominant. He gets it going offensively, and then the defense plays so much attention to him for easy drop-offs like that. How about a 14-1 run over the last five minutes? for Jacksonville to lead by seven. Nice look to Kern, who hammers it home. And that's a Virginia Credit Union assist from Ace Baldwin. Absolute dime. He saw that play before it happened. Every VCU assist, Virginia Credit Union makes a donation to the Children's Hospital of Richmond at VCU. Jacksonville up by five. Here's Marsh against Furman. Spin to the baseline. Gets his own miss. Furman the rebound. And Marsh gets the foul. And now some pushing by him and Baldwin. As we have a timeout on the floor. 11.50 to go in the first half. And Jacksonville has a five-point lead. Jacksonville with a five-point lead on VCU as tonight's first half is presented by McGeorge Toyota. McGeorge Toyota has been servicing customers in the Richmond area since 1958. McGeorge Toyota, we earn your trust every day. And also our pregame feature was presented by CarMax. CarMax, home of the 30-day money-back guarantee. Sean Robertson, Ed Nixon, member of the 2011 Final Four team. Right now, Jacksonville has done what they said they wanted to do. Defend the glass and kind of take this crowd out of the game so far. Absolutely. They did a great job of executing. Nolan's doing a great job of hitting tough shots. And when he continues to do that, he attracts the defense so much. And it opens up everything else for his teammates. However, if I'm BCU, I'm feeling pretty good. We're getting good looks at the basket. And we're playing solid defense. They're just hitting tough shots. Will that continue throughout the rest of the game? Shriver's on the floor with Ace Baldwin, Seth Jackson, who sees his first action. Lawal is back in, and Nick Kern is in. Jacksonville will have Sire Deans, along with Nolan, Davis, Cook, and also Osifo. The 10 on the floor right now. Jacksonville, for the first time, showing a little zone with 10 to shoot for VCU. Here's Baldwin inside the zone and scores. 
And that's what you like to see. Attacking the zone. Sometimes teams get caught and just passing it on the perimeter. Great aggressiveness by, by Ace Baldwin right there. His first field goal of the game. It cuts Jacksonville's lead to three. Deans has it over to Nolan for three and Shriver the rebound for VCU. They can tie it with the three on this possession. Here's Jackson. Found Kern in the corner in his travel. He had the open three, thought about it, and got caught. Absolutely. That's why you have to work on your game, ladies and gentlemen. That is a shot you have to take. When you try to force the issue when there's nothing there, it leads to a turnover. Just see Powell, who got the start tonight, the redshirt sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida, back in for the Dolphins. Jacksonville with uh, three players from the Jacksonville area on this year's squad. As we're almost at the halfway point, Jordan Davis in the corner. Misses on the three, and Jackson the rebound for VCU. Again, a chance to tie if they can hit from distance. And Shriver threw it away. Thought Dean, thought Kern was going to stay where he was. He cut to the basket. And another turnover for VCU, their third of the game. Now, there's nothing good about a turnover. However, dead ball turnovers are better than live ball turnovers. And you mentioned that as keys for both teams. Absolutely. Limiting the turnovers, but you would rather give up a dead ball turnover than a live ball. Absolutely. Cook in the corner for three. Ring it up for Jordan Cook and to give Jacksonville a six-point lead. And if there's one thing I learned from watching shoot around with you yesterday is Cook can really fill it up from behind the arc. Jerry is Cook, not Jordan Cook. Jerry is Cook from out of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, has given them a six-point lead. Jackson will try to answer. Kern with the offensive rebound for VCU. Misses that attempt. And the rebound to Osifo for Jacksonville. And right now, they are defending their goal 11-8 on the rebounding advantage for the Dolphins who are up six as we're inside nine and a half minutes. Davis for three. Another made basket. Check it. That's Powell from behind New York, and it's a nine-point Dolphins lead. Great pass out of the double team by Nolan there. And v I don't know how VC is going to change that, but they're going to have to be a little bit more active on ball to limit his, to limit his, uh, his vision of, of seeing the court. Foul is called on Jarius Cook. The transfer from North Dakota State, but back to that pass. And Powell, who shoots almost 47% from three-point land, made that count. A nine-point Jacksonville lead. VCU has to run some great offense here and get a good look. VCU, two for their last 11 from the field in the midst of a two-and-a-half-minute scoring drought. Brandon Johns backs it back in for VCU and misses on the three. Powell the rebound as they will try to make it a double digit lead here in this first half. And another one and done situation for VCU. Jacksonville in the top 50 in the country in field goal percentage this year, almost 49% as a team. Osifo against Luol. Jackson the rebound and the foul is going to go against Omar Caressi who checked in for Jacksonville. And you look at the offense right now, you, you mentioned that right when we came back from our last break, how they've been able to get some good shots, but on those last couple of trips, it seemed like Jacksonville is moving them away from the basket. Absolutely. And that could be a fate of ace ball when checking out of the game. Uh, but however, VCU has continued to move the ball, trust their offense to get good shots. I feel as if the last two shots were more so, more so forced, forced, excuse me, rather than running good offense. Brandon Johns will try another three. Ring it up for Brandon Johns. The graduate transfer from Michigan, shooting only 25% from three, has trimmed the Dolphins' lead to six. And let's give Powell some credit. He's, he's doing a great job of handling VCU's pressure right now. 
Nolan with six on the night against Jackson with 10 to shoot. Skip pass to Davis, who got fouled on the three-point shot. Jaden Nunn guilty of the foul, and Jordan Davis will shoot three free throws when we come back as the Dolphins up by six. Jacksonville on the road, leading by six over VCU with 7.50 to go, and three free throws pending from uh, Jordan Davis, who got fouled right before we went to break. And for those who are wondering how is the foul, you have to give the offensive player a chance to land. Jay Nunn closed out tight, but a little too close. Didn't give him, give him a chance to land. Equal three free throws. And during most of that timeout, head coach Mike Rhodes was giving Pat O'Connell an earful about that call on the other end that was not made for VCU offensively. And then on the other end, Jordan Davis, the transfer from Middle Tennessee State by way of Dayton, as we mentioned, has had big games against VCU when he was a flyer. He made the first of three, but Mike Rose was uh, giving the officials a little bit of an earful, and we will see if that will pay dividends on the next few offensive trips. Absolutely. Now, one thing I see that VCU needs to do a better job is making Jacksonville pass the ball with a little more air underneath it. They're passing out the double teams with a little bit too much zip, which is making it hard for VCU to recover to the, and close out. Two of three made by Jordan Davis, the team's best free throw shooter at almost 88%. He's averaging eight and a half a night. Rams down by eight as we're coming up on seven and a half to go. Watkins for three. Lawal an offensive rebound. Lawal strong with the goal, and we'll get a chance at a three-point play. And then... If you ever seen a black man fly, you just did. <laughs> if you never have, you just seen a black man fly. We may have mentioned this in earlier broadcasts, but Lawal has the highest vertical leap on the team, and he showed it there. I mean, he has NBA level athleticism. If he can put the skill with that, he is going to be trouble for opposing teams. And we talked around shoot around. He has not had a lot of varsity experience what three years of varsity two years of varsity two, two years of varsity i believe this is third year playing basketball. basketball amazing well two counting high school and then this year yep couldn't complete the three-point play jacksonville up by six on vcu 22 16. cook back in for the dolphins strong to the rim and scores with the right hand jarius cook with five so far in the first half, and the Dolphins back ahead by eight. And J <laughs> Cook was able to get Jameer Watkins out of this defensive stance with a pump fake because he's been so so good at, at, at shooting the ball. Nice ball fake by Johns, and the wall can't control it. Jacksonville back on offense. He's been so good at shooting the ball that a pump fake was able to lift him out of his defensive stance, and he got the middle drive. And that is a no-no for VCU defense. Josh Banks in for the first time as Jameer Watkins takes a seat. Jacksonville is led by as many as 11 in this first half. They currently are up eight as we're almost at six and a half to go. Nolan with six so far in the first half. Bounce pass inside, blocked by the wall out of bounds. Davis tried to go baseline and the wall said not so fast. And I can't reiterate this anymore. His athletic ability is outstanding. His ability to get off the floor. That was a pretty is, pass is, there yes. by, by, no, by Nolan, but the great recovery by Lawal comes up with the block. Under 10 to shoot for Jacksonville. Marsh is back in against Lawal. Spilled out. Another rebound for Lawal for VCU. Nice bounce pass to none. And these point guards are putting on a passing clinic. I am so excited to watch these guys go at it. That's another Virginia Credit Union assist by Ace Baldwin. Dropping the dime. His second of the night. Better pass around the horn. Here's Cook for three. That was a slick pass oh, there goodness. by Nolan. 
couldn't convert from distance. Oh my. Here's none with a step back three. Oh Good! That was a cha-cha slide. Yes, it was. <laughs> Jaden has seven to lead the way, and Coach Mincy wants a timeout for Jacksonville. It'll be a 30-second timeout, but how about this pass, or this cha-cha slide? <laughs> I like that there by Jaden Nunn. Look at that. Excuse me, sir. Where are you going? <laughs> Let me dance. Come and dance with me. Absolutely. And it's really good to see Jay Nunn be so aggressive offensively. This is what DC needs out of him. He's not the true point guard yet. He has the opportunity to continue to grow in that department. But right now, he is a bucket getter. He needs to excel in that. And it's a difficult spot for Nunn because he came in last year. Ace Baldwin missed the first eight games as he was still recovering from his Achilles injury. Nunn had to be the point. He's not a true point, but he can play the point. And now this year, when Ace was out for four games, you have to slide him back into the point. Again, adjusting to his roles, he can play both positions, but he's probably more of a, of a shooting guard than a true point guard. Absolutely. And, and at, this, at this time, he's more comfortable doing that. So you gotta, you gotta allow him to play his game. And right now he's leading the way for the Rams. He has seven. He's perfect from the field. And the Rams are within three with under five and a half to go. Here's Marsh drawing a foul in tight. And Marsh is such a low down, down on the block. He caught that ball and used all physicalness and power to go through, <laughs> to go through the VCU defender. Furman called for the foul. He's back in to replace the wall. That's his first. And a inbound on the baseline for Jacksonville. Coming in off their win against Trinity Baptist last week. VCU coming off their loss against Temple on Saturday. Davis against none with 10 to shoot. Making the extra pass. Here's Powell from the free throw line. Too strong and ball win the rebound. Now, I'm not sure if you noticed on that out of bounds play, they went and did the elevator screen. The elevator screen, and VCU guarded it well and made Jacksonville go around the screen instead of between. Johns will get two free throws on the Jacksonville foul. And we did see that in shoot around earlier today. And some people, I, I mentioned to you, I hadn't heard it be called an elevator screen. I've always heard it being just a double screen up top. Explain why they call that an elevator screen. Okay, so when you're, when you're referring to a double screen, it's really two offensive players setting the pick at the same time, same place. The elevator screen is designed to have the shooter or, or the guard uh, come through the, 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 the gap between the two offensive players and they close it shut, just like an elevator door. So that's the difference. That's Billups in for the first time, replacing Furman. Billups, a hometown product, played his high school ball at Verona here in Richmond. As Mike Rose is teaching Furman on the sideline, and I think might be about that last play you were talking about. Absolutely. Billups kept that rebound alive, but squeezed in by Nolan. As John splits the pair. VCU shooting just 40% from the line here in the first half, only down by two. And VCU, these last few possessions have did a great job of fighting through screens. Great job of scrambling out of, out of possessions. The three-pointer on the way by Cook. John's the rebound for VCU and a chance to take the lead if they hit from distance. John's will try it. And Powell the long rebound. And again, this is the pace that VCU wants to play. And in order to do that, they have to continue to get shot, stopped and continue to get rebounds. Rams just 2 of 12 from 3 here in the first half. Nolan from distance. And Billups the rebound. Now I know Nolan can fill it up. But that is not the type of shot that Jacksonville wants. They want to run some offense and get him an easier shot, a more in rhythm shot. Ball was passed, deflected by Nolan. Nolan tried to chase it down, out of bounds to VCU. The shot clock will not reset. When we come back from the last media timeout, they will have nine to shoot as they trail by two.
There's a look at the VCU bench. Head coach Mike Rose talking to his guys as the Rams trail by two. As we're coming up on off the last media timeout here in the half, Sean Robertson along with Ed Nixon, member of the 2011 Final Four team. He told me before this season that must be mentioned as he is introduced <laughs> when we work together for each game. So I'm doing as I've been told. And we are in for a real treat tonight. These teams are really going back and forth, back and forth. But each possession is so entertaining as the East team is trying to impose their will on another, on one another. Remember after that last possession as the wall is, draws a blocking foul on Jarius Cook. They only had nine seconds to get it in and get a shot off, and they were able to do so as the wall will go to the free throw line on this play. And thank goodness Cook got there when he did. Otherwise, if he was a half second later, he'd have been on a poster. The wall missed his first attempt earlier in the game and got that one to go in. Caressi now back in for Jacksonville to replace Cook. And speaking to, to, to JU's coaches, they really think that Cressy has the opportunity to be an outstanding player. He's the most skilled big they have at 6'10", and he's only a sophomore, so he has a lot more growth to go. He's 6'11 from Harlem, a transfer from Dodge City Community College. LaWall made both free throws, and we're tied again at 24. Jacksonville in a scoring drought of over three and a half minutes on the back end of an 8-0 run against by VCU. Marsh against the wall. The spin move on the baseline and drops it in to break that 8-0 drought. And that was a great move, great extension for the reverse. Marsh, first player in double figures with 10. He averages 12-4 a night as the Dolphins are back in front by two. Billups against Powell. Shows off the jumper to tie the game. And I've always said this about Billups. His game is so smooth and so relaxed that if you're going to give him that space, he's going to take that space and he's going to make you pay for it. Ball went causing havoc. Picks up the turnover. Here's Banks for three. That would have blew the roof off this joint. <laughs> Absolutely. But Powell clears it for Jacksonville as we're tied at 26. Davis looks at a trap. Nolan for three. Ring it up. Kevion Nolan now with nine. All from distance in Jacksonville ahead, 29-26. And if I'm Ace Baldwin, I want to try something different on, on Nolan. He's getting too comfortable with just pulling up and shooting it. We want to make him put the ball on the ground. Baldwin with the answer. Right back at you. Six for Baldwin here in the first half. Here's first make from behind the arc. He yep. shoots 61 and a half percent from three-point land this season. I did say 61 and a half percent. Powell tried to answer, could not. None the rebound. VCU with a chance to take the lead. Baldwin to none from mid-range. And the rebound to Caressi. Entertaining first half here at the Siegel Center as we're tied at 26, coming up on one minute here in the half. Now, I wonder... Great look. Great look. And Powell drains it from distance. Great look. That was like a quarterback reading the defense. He looked the defender off to find the defender, in, uh, to find the offensive player in the corner. Open three, count it. Nolan came in averaging a team best four assists a game. And right now he's got five in the first half. Banks for the three. Ring it up again. This is a heavyweight title match and they are going blow for blow. Josh Banks now with six. Who has the endurance? Who has the willpower? Who has, who has the stick to itiveness? I think our possession was knocked out last as I was checking the scoreboard. But back to that last play, that first one by Nolan. Over here. God. 
right in the pocket, catch and shoot for power. You hear that a lot from, from shooters. They like a pocket pass. And Baldwin say, you like that? I'll give you one back. <laughs> I like it. Well, they have Banks with three. I thought he had six. I thought he had made one earlier, but I was corrected. So that's Banks' first basket. Tied at 32. 20, under 20 seconds to go. Jacksonville will hold it for about one shot. Davis fills the double team with five to shoot. Here's Nolan. A head fake blocked by Nunn. They can get a chance. Here's Baldwin. That follow-up will not count. And after 20 minutes, we got ourselves a good one. Absolutely. Ty, Ty going in the half. Both teams are playing extremely well. Great offense. Great defense. We'll see what happens in the second half. 32 all as halftime activities continue right after this. Final 20 minutes here at the Siegel Center. VCU and Jacksonville tied at 32 apiece. And the point guard matchup we talked about at the beginning of the broadcast lived up to the hype. Great assists by both Nolan and Baldwin. And great defensive play. Nolan with nine, Baldwin with six points in the game. And we'll see how this plays out in the final 20 minutes. Absolutely. And I think this game is going to come down to guts and will and stamina. These teams are playing so well together, or, or so, so well against each other, that it's, it's really going to come down to who really wants it more. Starting five for both teams on the floor to begin the half. Brandon Johns picks up a, a foul six seconds in. His first, and as we mentioned at the beginning of the game, no Jalen Deloach tonight, undisclosed illness. Toby Lawall got the start, his first career start. It's Davis strong to the goal, and they get a late foul on Lawall. And Mike Rose is hot. And so is the rest of the Stewart Seagull Center. <laughs> I thought they were going to give him a clean block, but the whistle came in after Davis hit the floor. And Mike Rose is talking to Bill Covington about that whistle that came in a half a second late. Davis got the shooter's rollers that <laughs> hung on the lip of the rim for about a half a second. And that was, I mean, I understand him giving, up, giving him a call on that. However, the late whistle always makes it worse. There was contact, but I don't know if... It's been a physical game, yeah, I'm, been, I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not sure if you call that. You're going to call that now, you got to call it late if that takes place. Davis split a pair, as actually made both, rather, as the Dolphins are up two. Around the horn, here is none against Osifo and scores. And Jaden Nunn doesn't get enough credit for his body control in midair. He does a great job of absorbing contact and still having his eyes focused on the rim to finish the play. Nunn leading the Rams and scoring with nine. Here's Nolan. Great hands. That was Bal Baldwin creating havoc. Here's Marsh inside and scores his 12th point. That was a tough move there by Mike Marsh, the junior from out of Columbia, South Carolina. Ball was deflected, no backcourt. And Baldwin retrieves it. Johns left open and then draws a foul on Osifo. And what makes John so hard to guard is the fact that he has he's so versatile that he can shoot the three. He can put the ball on the floor. So you have to respect him at all three layers of the game. Jerry is cooked back in to replace Osifo. And when you talk about the three layers, four score, you're talking about what? Well, he, he can get all the way to the cup. He can post you up. He has the mid-range game. And also, he can knock down a three. Ball win the miss. Cook the rebound for Jacksonville, who are ahead by two. Just beginning the second half. A minute and a half gone by. Cook against Johns. Marsh has it against LaWall. Inside the Davis. Blocked by Watkins. Retrieved by Nunn. And he'll wait for teammates. Great, great block by Jameer Watkins. 
He missed all of last season with a torn ACL. Nolan deflected that pass, but none has it with close to 10 to shoot. Inside to the wall. Hammer up. And that was almost a turnover. I thought Jameer had, had a better opportunity to shoot the ball. He, he has the capability of doing that. However, he was able to get that pass in there. Toby did the rest. A career high eight points for the wall. Nice feed inside to Marsh, who almost got a three point play. None would get whistled for the foul. Nolan could play quarterback with the vision he's showing here tonight. <laughs> but back to that last play by Lawal. Yeah, I, I don't really think Jameer had the right angle. He was kind of far out, so I understand I'm not shooting that. But it ended up working out. So Mike Marsh back at the line, an 80% shooter. Gives Jacksonville a one-point lead. He's a transfer from Dodge City. He and... Caressi, Omar Caressi were teammates at Dodge City and then they transferred and came to Jacksonville playing for head coach Jordan Mincy. Almost almost like our Michigan. I was going to say, yeah. The Michigan yeah. connection with Johns and Zeb Jackson. Two made free throws by Marsh. She now has 14 to give Jacksonville a two-point lead. Ball deflected by Marsh. And the steal by the Dolphins. Powell has it. And a two-point lead for Jacksonville. Marsh against Furman inside. And Marsh scores again. 16 for Mike Marsh and a four-point Dolphins lead. And his footwork is impeccable. He is able to wind and dine and twist and twirl down there on that block. And he's doing a great job of finishing, making BCU pay. Skip pass to Watkins for three. Nolan, the rebound for Jacksonville. Up four. As we're coming about three and a half minutes gone in the second half. Davis for three. And fouled again on a three-point shot. Ace Baldwin caught for the foul for VCU. In Again, you have to allow the offensive player a chance to land. Now that was uh, that was close. I, I would need to see a replay. Jordan Davis back at the line to shoot three free throws. As I mentioned, he had big games against the Rams when he was at Dayton in the 2018-19 season. He averaged almost 17 a night, scored 21 against the Rams in January of 2019. Uh, what do you think? I understand. I understand the call. I do understand the call. It's Second tough. free throw made by Davis. The Shriver re-enters the line after a place from him. As you were saying about that, the call against Ace. Yeah, so, I mean, Ace closed out hard. You know, when I was playing, it would have been play on. But they changed the rules to protect the offensive player. And by the rule book, that is a foul. Davis made all three free throws for Jacksonville up seven. None for three. Ring it up. He becomes the first Ram in double figures now with a dozen to pull VCU to within four. And again, Jay Nunn as a scorer is a completely different player. Offensive foul. That's going to be called on Powell, and that brings us to a media timeout. 15.52 to go in the game, and Jacksonville ahead by four. Sean Robinson, Ed Nixon here at the Siegel Center. The last game before winter break here on campus. Uh, Coach Mike Rose said this week, those games when the students are gone and the players can just focus on basketball are probably maybe the most important stretch outside of late February and March. A team will have and he really puts a lot of emphasis on those games you know I really hated those times <laughs> I mean because we would have two a days while everybody just sitting at, sitting at home eating mom's cooking oh what a move by gone. John's sorry about that Ed. <laughs> and a foul as Marsh draws it 
But I'm just saying, I, mean, I, was, I thought you were going to talk about just with the crowd not being as boisterous when the students are not here. But you're talking about the actual practices you deal with oh, yeah. when it is winter break. You get after it winter break. Believe me, we get two, day, we get two or three days off after that. <laughs> Hard work. <laughs> John shoots two for VCU, but that's what Coach Rose mentioned this week. You get more time with the guys. You get opportunities to practice. If there is a mistake, you can go back and be more technically sound with that as opposed to if it was just a, a normal week during the uh, during the semester. Correct. You do get better during that time, but it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a struggle. It's, it's a fight. John's with both free throws that would have pulled the Rams to within two. It's still a four-point Dolphins lead. Watkins harassing Powell on the perimeter. Here's Marsh against Johns. And Marsh muscles it up, can't get it to go. John's the rebound. Great defense by VCU. And that was good offense by Marsh, just missed the shot. They give it to Johns against Marsh. Stripped away by Marsh and picked up by Jacksonville. And Baldwin gets called for the foul. It's getting, it's getting physical on both it's, ends. It's, it's getting very physical. It's getting a little bit chippy. But what else did you expect? That, this, these, these teams are, they're, they're, their style of play is combative. Evenly matched between the two. You may not know a lot about Jacksonville. They're not nationally known across the country, but this is a good basketball team this year. And it's one reason why, because of that guy, Nolan. Here's Cook for three. And that's what he does, ladies and gentlemen. He shoots the ball at an extremely high clip. He shoots just over 36% from three, and Jacksonville is up seven. Here's Watkins trying to get on track. None has it against Nolan. Shot clock under 10. None over Nolan for three. Marsh the rebound for Jacksonville. And that's a decent shot. However, you want to run the offense a little bit more crisp, screen a little bit harder, see if you can get a better one than that. Ball poked away from Nolan. Here's none against Nolan. And almost got it to go. None will get two free throws. I think Nolan will get the foul. Yeah, and, but VCU's pressure is going to pay dividends in the second half. That is just the first turnover, but I believe it's going to increase because they're making them work 94 feet. Only five turnovers committed by Jacksonville in the game. VCU normally forces around 18 a game. And this game is this game is very peculiar because VCU usually has 10 turnovers by this time. At least, well. yeah. Lawal back in along with Nick Kern to give Johns and Watkins a breather. Nunn has 13 in the game as he made the first free throw. We mentioned he was scoreless against Vanderbilt, only took three shots in that game, but was much more aggressive against Temple on Saturday, playing just as aggressive here tonight. He has 14 and has the Rams within five. And part of that is just having a, de a defined role. And that's difficult for him. He's only a sophomore, but still playing both guard positions this uh, in his short career. Marsh got hammered by the wall, no whistle. Marsh gets it back, blocked again by the wall, and they're going to stay out of bounds. And Marsh is going to get called for a tech. And I got, I got to be honest, there probably was two fouls in there. However, the game has been played so physical that, I mean, you can't expect to get that call. Now, he's mad about that one. The second one that's going to come up, that's that was clean. That's good defense. But the first one, he has an arguable point because he got hammered. Watch it again. And I'll tell you what, to prevent all of that, Shriver should have stood his ground. 
He took him. That's, that's what we call false hustle. You completely removed yourself out of the play going for a steal and left your teammate out, out to hang. You're supposed to stand there, wall up, and double team that right there. And however, he bailed, he bailed, he bailed out and left his teammate in trouble right there. So Marsh got the tech. That's his third. Baldwin with two free throws. And he missed the first one. Now, we had this incident against Vanderbilt Wednesday night when Jerry Stackhouse was tossed. And Baldwin has six free throws on the three technical fouls. This is only one. He splits the pair. Jerry Stackhouse wanted to put some pause <laughs> on, <laughs> on the officials. <laughs> Which was the turning point in that game that VC wound up winning. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> hey, everybody has to be able... Did he get tossed? We may have to get an explanation about that. I think Sean Hall and Bill Covington will look at the monitor to check out what's going on. But was there a, I won't say, I guess a flagrant on the wall maybe with the uh, with the elbow up high? I'm not sure what's going on right now. We'll have to get the explanation from the two officials over there. That's Bill Covington and Sean Hall both looking at the monitor. And I think everything is back to order. But there was no foul on the play, and it should be VCU's ball after the two technical free throws. So we got an explanation from Bill Covington. It was actually a goal. It will go back to Jacksonville on the play and said the ball never hit the rim. So they will reset the shot clock, and that's why they looked at the monitor. They reset it to six on the shot clock, and the ball never hit the rim, and there was no change of possession. So it will go back to Jacksonville with six to shoot. Here's Cook off the inbound. Drills Great a three shot. from the corner. Great a shot tough shot Cook. over Shriver for Jarius Cook, who now has eight. A seven-point Jacksonville lead. What a tough shot. I'm not sure if you can defend that, can you defend that any better. A big answer for Jacksonville after the technical foul called on Nick Marsh. Here's LaWall who got hammered by Cook. Great two-man game there by Baldwin and LaWall. And LaWall's doing a good job of setting, setting a good screen. Opening up the ability for him to roll. Let's see if he can knock these two free throws down. The freshman from London, England. Played at the City of London Academy before moving to Maine. And played at Lee Prep Academy. Played two years of varsity basketball there. Recruited heavily by Mike Rose. He now is here at VCU. And got his first career start as Caressi will come in to replace Jarius Cook. And VCU is shooting 50% from the free throw line while Jacksonville is shooting 90%. That may come back and bite VCU later in this game. Rams collectively 70% from the line this season. Jacksonville only 68% yet. Shooting 90% from the line. 9 of 10 here in the game. And DC's defensive pressure is starting to take an uptick. Caressi goes up against Shriver. Pass deflected. Powell has it and scores. And another tough shot by Jacksonville. Powell now with eight. An eight-point Dolphin lead. Here's none. Shriver trying to break out of that zone. Here's none. Shriver left open. And out of bounds to VCU. Last touch by Powell. And that's the Shriver that that's the shot that Shriver is very capable of hitting. However, the, the, the ball just hasn't been friendly with him. So he has to continue to step into the shot with confidence. Because he know he has he knows he has the ability to knock it down. Now before this year. He was shooting around 40% for his career. He shot 41% at 
at Hartford from three last season. This year, 27.5% and it's in the midst of an 11 for 42 shooting slump from three. Now, with those numbers, it's hard to be confident. However, th you, have to, you have to understand this is what you've done your whole life. You have to be continue to make, remain confident and step into your shots because your teammates are dependent on you. Now, we saw him shoot around today, and it seemed like he couldn't miss. There was a stretch he had made eight straight. But just in the situation, is the confidence is, is not all the way there. Stripped away by Caressi, and Powell has it for Jacksonville with an eight-point lead. Great help side or blind side defense by Caressi. Here's Powell trying to split the double and a whistle and a foul on Nick Kern. Timeout on the floor, 11.48 to go. Jacksonville will shoot free throws when we come back. We're right around the corner. We're about, uh, what, 18 days, 17 days away <laughs> from Christmas. Have you done your Christmas shopping? Absolutely not. I have some work to do. <laughs> I have some work to do. At least you have some work to do right here, down eight. Under 12 to go here in the game. And down court is Osifol with the hammer. Another assist by Nolan. That's his sixth of the night. And is back up to a 10-point Jacksonville lead. And that was a blown coverage by VCU. They had some action on the opposite side. And they removed the help defense. Baldwin almost turned it over. Zeb Jackson back in for VCU with 10 to shoot. Gives it to his former Michigan teammate. Johns with five. Here's Jackson in the corner for three. One and done as Nolan grabs it for Jacksonville. And these are shots that VCU has to hit. That was that was a great job by Johns, attracting two defenders for a kick out. Open three, got to knock it down. Davis had it stripped away by Johns. Goes right to the rim. And what did I tell you? That pressure is accumulative. I said the 10-minute mark. I think we're going to start seeing an uptick in those turnovers. That's always Jacksonville's seventh turnover of the night. VCU down by eight. We're coming up on 10 minutes to go here in the game. Nolan with seven assists in the game, and then Johns got called for a bump. But back to the steal by Brandon Johns. Active hands, was able to get the ball loose, and then attack the rim. Bring the pain, Brandon Johns. <laughs> His eighth point of the night. VCU over the limit. That was their 17 foul. So here come Nolan to the line for Jacksonville. Preseason All Atlantic Sun Conference player. Team's leading score at 13 a night. And an 80% shooter from the strike. And I think the difference in this game is the free throws 53% for VCU, 91% for Jacksonville. So 10 of 11 from the line, make it 11 of 12. Jacksonville came in tonight only shooting 68. 0.8% from the strike this season. They're at 92% tonight and lead by 10. Here's Kern. Stripped away by Powell. Four on two for Jacksonville. Caressi inside. The lead is at 12. Largest of the night. And Mike Rose wants a timeout. And I tell you what. When you come off the bench, you have to be, be able to bring energy and provide something. The last subs did not provide that energy that VCU needed. Not saying they did bad, but they, they needed to provide, provide a pump, and they did not. Jacksonville leading by 12 back after this. This is the first of a six-game homestand for VCU through the Christmas break. And right now, Jacksonville on the road leading by a dozen on the Rams. We talked about the importance of those games during the winter break, giving more time for the coaches to work with the players, but six home games in a row, huge 
for VCU in the development of this team. Still new, still getting acclimated with each other. Right now, they're on the ropes, trailing by 12. Absolutely, but you know, playing at home gives you that extra comfort that that some players need. You know, when you're when you're a star like Ace Baldwin or, 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 or Jada Nunn, you've been you're, you're battle tested. But for the new guys, playing at home brings comfort. The wall had to go off his hands and out of bounds to Jacksonville. Sean Robertson, Ed Nixon, I remember the 2011 Final Four team here at the Single Center. Right now, Jacksonville with a 12-point lead over the Rams, looking to try to add to that as Nolan. And Baldwin have had a really good matchup at the point guard position. Nolan had it stolen by Watkins. And a reach and foul on Caressi. And VCU has to find a way to turn these turnovers into points. Because the turnovers are going to come. The pressure's been consistent throughout the whole game. It's only natural that the legs start to wear. Your decision making starts to, 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 to waver a little bit. BC has to be able to turn this into points. Jameer Walker has the opportunity to do that right now. Both teams will shoot free throws the rest of the game after fouls. It's a one and one for Jameer Watkins. Averaging over 10 points a night this season. Can't convert on the front end. Again, free throws. Should be now 8 of 16 from the line at 50 percent. 12-point Jacksonville lead inside nine and a half minutes. Cook has it with under 10 to shoot. Powell against none. Caressi losing it and out of bounds to Jacksonville with one on the shot clock. And that's great defense by VCU. Now they just have to finish it. Jacksonville's going to have to force up a shot. You got to finish it with the rebound. Powell with the inbound. That should have been a travel. Caressi had a shot blocked and a shot clock violation. That was a violation, I thought, on Powell because that was a spot inbound and he was moving before he passed it. The refs could have missed that one. You don't really see that call too much either. You don't. But usually when they point downward, that's on the means. floor, it says that's a spot, and you're supposed to stay there. And Powell did not. VCU gets a break down by 12. Johns thinks about it and misses the three. Cook the rebound for Jacksonville. And right now, they are plus seven on the glass. Powell looking like he's playing more of the point than Nolan, who shoots for three. And air ball back to VCU. Now, in the words of Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack, Jacksonville is leaving the door open for VCU to get back in this game. They have had three possessions where they just did not get good shots. VCU in a scoring drought of almost two and a half minutes. Ball was passed, knocked out of bounds. They stay with the Rams with 18 to shoot. And Baldwin is talking to Bill Covington like he was being held on that last possession. Yeah, but they need a spark, speaking of VCU, some way, shape, or form. Jordan Davis back in to replace Caressi. It looks like now the Dolphins are a little bit smaller. OC4 is the biggest player on the floor for Jacksonville at 6'8". Johns lost control, got it back. Baldwin to none, 10 to shoot for the Rams. Here's Baldwin with five to shoot. Goes off the glass, and Lawal draws a foul. He'll shoot at least a one and one. Now, that was a great effort by Lawal, attempting to go get the rebound. And just his athleticism alone, I can't, I'm not being a dead horse, but with his athleticism alone going after that, even if there wasn't a foul, it looked as if it was a foul. Jordan Davis got the foul. That's his first, and Lawal back at the line. A one and one for the freshman, making his first career start here at VCU. And the VCU, the VCU fans cheer with delight as someone makes a free throw. Ten points for the wall. He came in averaging just over a point a night, made one of two. His career high was four 
And he scored that against Vanderbilt the last home game a week ago. VCU trailing by 11. Osifo against the wall, and he yanks down the rebound for VCU. Another miss for Jacksonville. Can VCU capitalize? Nolan comes up with the block, and he has numbers. The alley -oop to Osifo who scores. Mm, great defense by Nolan to get that block. 13 point Jacksonville lead. Nolan has done a little bit of everything here tonight for the for the Dolphins. Here is Watkins for three. Shot an air ball and a foul inside. And that'll go against the Dolphins. And again, VCU is getting good opportunities, but they have to be able to knock something down. And they are just not doing that right now. And Jacksonville is taking advantage. And they'll shoot a one and one when we come back. Dolphins up by 13. Story of this game, blocks on both ends of the floor. Toby Lawal, Jalen, Jameer Watkins, Lawal again. The high riser. <laughs> but there comes Nolan, who sets up the alley-oop to OC4. And we spoke about that. Nolan is so aware of where his players are that he, he widened out his, his lane to give his teammates some room and, and clear the landing for the alley-oop. As soon as he got it, it seemed like he looked to his right just a half a second and saw Osi fulfilling the lane. He was like, okay, like you said, let me widen it a little bit and set him up. So Toby Lawal back at the line. He split a pair his last trip, trying to cut off a 13-point lead, and he missed the front end. Davis the rebound for Jacksonville. That is going to be a, a concern going into conference play, which starts New Year's Eve for VCU at home against LaSalle. Right now, 9 of 18 from the line. And Marsh checks back into the game. They had to give him some time to cool off. He had picked up one technical foul and a strong move inside by Kevion Nolan, who now is in double figures with 13. He's one of three players for Jacksonville in double figures, and it's a 15-point Dolphins lead. And to be honest with you, VCU is going to look at film, win or lose this game, and they're going to look at film and realize, wow, we were right there. We just did not hit our open shots, nor did we knock down our free throws. Here's Johns with the slam off the ace ball win miss. Johns now in double figures with 10. He's the third VCU player with at least 10, and it's a 13-point Dolphins lead. Powell broke the press, applied by Watkins. Six minutes left in the game. Jacksonville has led for most of this half. Marsh against the wall. And the rebound to Johns. So they get one stop. Now can they cut more off this lead? And they got to get some movement. They got to get the ball hopping. Off of the LaWall screen. Baldwin left open for three. Halfway down, and Marsh clears for Jacksonville. And you spoke about how Ace Baldwin was shooting 60% from three point from the three-point line. And I thought to myself, that's gonna change. I didn't say it out loud. And however, he hasn't been able to get it going tonight. Baldwin just one of four from behind the arc tonight. Coming up on money time here in the game. Tend to shoot for the Dolphins. Cook a step back three. Long rebound to none. Another stop. Can they score? Here's none. Had it blocked. Bodies on the floor. Davis has it for Jacksonville. And he'll go coast to coast for the deuce. Great, great challenge at, at the rim. However, there could have been some body contact there. Baldwin tried to draw a foul. Mike Rose tried to get a timeout. Didn't get that either. Here's Powell. He'll shoot for three. Marsh an offensive rebound, no good, and a foul on the wall. Mike Rose tried to wow. get a timeout, and the officials missed it. Wow. What a series of events. And they finally get the timeout. 
Mike Rose had call had motioned the ace ball one to call a timeout. The ball one tried to draw a foul. Does I I may be missing something, but does Ace Baldwin have to call that timeout, or could Rose call that timeout? Because I saw that Rose was signaling for the uh, timeout. He did, but I thought he was and motioning why, to Baldwin why. to call the timeout. But so I, I thought when he was motioning to him, the, the officials would look at that and say, okay, they want a timeout, yeah. and they didn't get it. it, it, it I, I, I don't think that Ace would throw that up like that. if Unless Ace didn't know he was calling, telling Baldwin to, draw, to get the timeout either. He was probably motioning to him, and he didn't notice it, and he was trying to get that foul on the three-point shot. But Absolutely. That, that's a, that is a tough, tough break for VCU. If things couldn't go worse, they just did. They did. So right now, all sorts of confusion, but it's going to be Jacksonville's ball. And they're shooting free throws. And they're shooting free throws. And I did not like that call, by the way. That looked like a clean block. I, you missed the first one where he got murdered. <laughs> and, you, and you called that one. He got murdered and got a check for that because he thought he was mugged. <laughs> but he'll be shooting free throws. And right now you're looking at Jacksonville up 15 against VCU coming off their loss to Temple on the road. And as we mentioned, this is the start of a six-game home trip for VCU that goes through the winter break. They'll play here Sunday night against Howard. Second time they'll see a school from the MEAC. And then they'll have games against the likes of Northern Illinois, Navy, and then they'll have their A-10 opener New Year's Eve afternoon against the LaSalle Explorers. As Ace yeah. Baldwin is still, yeah. Talking, yeah, still talking to the officials, talking to Sean Hall. And he was pleading this case. I don't have to call the timeout. Rose is calling the timeout. And Marsh misses the first free throw. Only the second miss from the strike by Jacksonville tonight. 11 to 13. And the free throw line has been the biggest difference in this game. Marsh splits a pair. Jacksonville 12 of 14. VCU 9 of 19. And it's a 16 point Dolphins lead. Here's Johns, who draws a foul on Marsh. And VCU kind of got away from getting Marsh into the screen and roll, as we were doing early in the second half, and early in the first half. And they kind of removed, got away from that, and kind of went just attacking him on the block. So they say now two shots. That was team foul number 10 on the Dolphins. So double bonus for the Rams the rest of the game. Johns' first free throw. Gives him 11 above his season average. Osifo back in to replace Marsh, who leads with 17 points, 9 rebounds, and 4 fouls. First player in the danger zone. Actually, second player in the danger zone because Osifo also has 4 fouls. Johns makes both. VCU has been, has been doing a good job of tacking Jacksonville's defense. However, when they got the fouls, they ended up leaving empty-handed because they weren't making free throws. Here's the full-court press. And Jacksonville breaks it, but it results in a turnover. John saved it, and now we got a foul as Cook gets called for diving into John's. And that's probably the worst-case scenario for Jacksonville. Not only do you get the turnover, you get a quick foul, send VCU back to the free throw line. Now, with how they're shooting it, it might work out for Jacksonville. But the biggest thing is, is making these free throws without any time elapsing. Correct. You do that, you're going to see that press again. John's made his last two. Three of six from the line tonight. He's got 12 points on the, uh, on the evening. Felt like a library <laughs> here when John's just uh, attempted that first free throw. Everybody was saying their prayers. <laughs> So we'll just be quiet here, too. <laughs> Everybody talking to God, saying things they won't do no more. It worked. <laughs> That's four straight by Johns. And it's a 12-point lead. And here comes the full-court press again. Coming up on four minutes to go in the game. Powell. 
Gets the turnover. And that brings yes. us to our last media timeout. 3.58 to go. Rams still in it, down by 12. They have plenty of time to go to get it back. All right, here's our Virginia Credit Union assists of the game. And who else? Ace Baldwin. Great way to get the defense attention. And great cut by Nick Kern back door. Ace found him for a monstrous jump. The Virginia Credit Union assists of the game. With every VCU assist, Virginia Credit Union makes a donation to the Children's Hospital of Richmond and VCU. And right now, VCU with eight assists on the night. Baldwin with half of them. But right now, the Rams trailing by 12 with under four minutes to go. They did force the turnover before the last time out. So they have another chance to cut into this Dolphins lead, try to get it back to single digits. But if they do it, they got to try to get it from the field. The Rams are one for their last nine from the field. Now, the good thing is they're, they're, they are in the double bonus. Here's Watkins with the right-hand scoop. OC for the rebound. Great attack, but you got to get the contact. You're in the double bonus. Don't try to finesse it. Get the contact, go through the, the defender. The lead remains at 12 with three and a half to go. Nolan way out in front. Shot clock is under 10. Here is Powell to Osifo. Partially blocked by Watkins, and VCU has it. Great recovery by Watkins. That's, that's multiple efforts. Here's Johns, and he draws a foul on Cook. And that's what it takes to win games and come back in the game. It's going to take multiple efforts, multiple, multiple players hustling. Everybody has to be on one accord. Cook became the first player to get disqualified. His fifth foul. He will lead with 11 points above his average. He came in averaging four a game. Back to that last play. And that was close to getting all ball, but it appears to be a foul. Sometimes, as players, you think, I didn't foul him, I didn't foul him. However, this is a, the refs are doing a visual job. If it appears to be a foul, whether you hit all ball or not, they're going to call it. And I wonder, do you think they're calling it a little bit tighter because we did have that play that was not a foul, but it looked a foul with LaWall and Marsh, and Marsh got the technical foul. You think they, maybe they call it a little bit tighter after that? I mean, that's, that's usually how referees go about calming down the game. Just make, they call a little bit tighter, slow things down, and let emotions settle. So John's back at the line. He's made his last four. VCU down by 12. And no one else's drinks. <laughs> I won't say anything else about that. <laughs> I gave you a look. You did. <laughs> Six in a row made by John. You know, they have the announcers jinx in the NFL with a field goal kicker who does well and misses. John's has made his last six and a turnover. Here's John's underneath. Or actually, Banks, rather. Josh Banks has pulled BCU to within eight. Here comes the pressure again. And, and, this, and this is the thing. BC is playing like they're starving, like they're like they're like they're completely dehydrated, and they need a drop of water. And for teams that are great, they do that from the beginning of the game. Stripped away by Johns, and a foul drawn by Powell. Another turnover. You did mention free, you mentioned that, and you also mentioned free throws, and that was going to play a role. Later in the game, and that has gone right to Brandon Johns. And, and Jacksonville is now playing to not lose the lead as we look at this as this replay. Great, great, great shot by, by Josh Bank. Having the ability to readjust and, and, and focus and make it again. So Brandon Johns back at the line. He's got 16 points on the night to lead the Rams. It is so quiet. It is uncomfortable. <laughs> it's like, what do you do? Do you talk about what he's done so far in the game or you just shut up? 
TV Broadcasting 101. You let the pitcher tell the story. <laughs> Absolutely. Two more made by Brandon Johns. He's made eight straight from the line, and it's a six-point game with 2.37 to go. And this, this is great. The atmosphere is picked up. These two actually had fans lead. Boy, that was almost a 10-second call. Looked like the ball was in his hands right when it went to 10. Yep. And now Jacksonville has 10 to shoot. This is a big defensive play right here. Oh, my goodness. What a Here's great, Nolan. What a great job. Drilling oh, a great shot. And it looks like Nolan is cramping up. No stoppage on there. Will Jacksonville burn a foul? They won't as Banks goes inside and got fouled by Marsh. And that's five. And he's gone. What a big shot by Nolan right there. Oh Who is noticeably goodness. cramping in his right calf. But back to that shot by Nolan with about two seconds on the shot clock. Switched it home. And Ace Baldwin has played a great game so far. However, he did one thing. He gave him space. It's only one, it's all, it's one a second on the shot clock. Don't give up any space. Suffocate him. And he backed up a little bit, gave him that opportunity to get a shot off. But I also want to give credit to Josh Banks. Jacksonville was trying to go for the high-low with, with the big, and Josh Banks did a great job of denying that pass to allow them to get the op opportunity to do the high-low. The high great great defensive play. Better offense, offensive shot, though. Jacksonville calls a timeout. I would assume to give Nolan some rest without taking him out of the game. Two players for Jacksonville now have fouled out. As we go back to that last play by Banks to get Marsh out of the game. Ooh, he got away with a travel, too. He, he, he got to keep those puppies on the ground. A fortuitous no call there by Josh <laughs> Banks. For him now to go to the free throw line, where VCU has been pretty good down the stretch, they're now at 63% with Johns hitting the last eight attempts for VCU, but Banks will have two to try to get this to within seven. And also, the referees want to make it home to their families. They know if they would have called if they would have called that travel, I'm pretty sure Rodney Ram would have jumped on it. Probably. But for the most part, for the officials, Pat O'Connell, along with Sean Hall and Bill Covington, they've been pretty good for the most part tonight. Absolutely. They, 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 they've been doing a good job even controlling the game when it got out of hand. Now, there's one thing I know. It's cramped. BCU is going to up the pressure. I'm not sure how long Nolan's going to be able to hold up. It's a good point because if, if Banks makes these two free throws, you know it's going to come off the inbound. Absolutely. And, he's, and, and Nolan is still limping noticeably around the free throw three-point line now, as you see him in your picture. It looks like a cramp, and he's trying to shake and walk it off. Trying to keep it loose. He might be done for the... I, I'm, I'm being dead serious. I've been to the hospital three times for full body cramps. Wow. Once they start coming, it's hard to make them stop. Another made free throw by VCU. This one is going to be huge to force the uh, press against Jacksonville. That's at least 10 in a row made by VCU. They're now 18 to 28 from the line. Here comes the press. Ball is kicked. It'll stay with Jacksonville. And a new 10-second call, count rather, on that. And if I'm reading body language, Davis wants nothing to do with this press. To be honest with you, I don't think anybody wants anything to do with this press. And Davis should know what the VCU press is about with his time at Dayton. He saw VCU six times while he was with the Flyers. Davis just got it across. Deflected, ball on the floor, close to a backcourt, but Davis gets the timeout to save possession. That backside was right near <laughs> the midcourt strike. 
but it stayed on his half of the floor to maintain possession. And again, I like the effort by none going for the steal. However, and it almost worked out in their favor still. However, that's a major no-no there you, by Davis. You can't remove yourself from the play. Yeah. You can't remove yourself. From, they don't, they have been struggling to get it up the court. You can't remove yourself from the play. Now, he was able to get back and, and still cause some havoc. However, you want to make them work every inch right now. I'm very surprised for Davis being a grad student. That's a fifth-year player. For him to pick up his dribble as soon as he crossed midcourt. And we spoke about this before the game. Everybody knows don't pick up your dribble. You're not supposed to do that. However, that mental pressure, that physical pressure that VCU applies in this press, all that goes out the window. Yeah. You have to be mentally strong to handle the press in this time of the, of the game as well. So he, would, he, he knows better, but he wasn't thinking. Because that brings that half-court strike as a third defender when the trap came. we got to mention that our halftime stats in tonight's game was brought to you by the Virginia Credit Union, home of the VCU Black and Gold MasterCard. 141 left in regulation, 17 to shoot for Jacksonville, who are up seven on VCU. Davis will inbound. Let's see how Nolan will move with that cramp. It was on his right calf. And a foul. And they're going to call Baldwin with the foul. And Nolan, Nolan is visibly cramp, cramping right now, and he has to walk to the line for a big two shots. Nolan, two of two from the line tonight. He came in shooting 80% this season. Big make there by Nolan now with 17. We mentioned the transfer from Sanford. First team all Atlantic Sun Conference preseason selection. Makes both nine point lead, 95 seconds remaining. Here's none against Davis. DC has to go. It's not force one up. Banks Great for bomb. three. Out of bounds to VCU. That was a great find um, by Jameer Watkins with Banks in the corner. I know VCU fans hope that he hit that. Osmore is asking for a review, and I think he'll get it. They will review that last play to see if, in fact, Jacksonville touched it last. That was the call on the floor. Bill Covington along with Sean Hall over at the scorer's table to check the replay. This is a big call. Well, let's see. It's OC4 and Johns battling. It looks pretty close, but that's definitely out on Jacksonville. Great job by our crew here tonight at the Siegel Center giving you the, the sights and sounds. Ed thinks that's no doubt on OC4. It looks as if John was trying to hit the ball for his half court. Now, Old Four was trying to grab it, and it, look, it looked as if his left hand knocked it out. Yeah, it looked like Osipo's right hand hit it last, and he also got John's below the below the chin. <laughs> John's already had his nose broke twice this season. That was close to a third one there. But I think Osipo did hit it out last. Rodney the Ram enjoys uh, some lighthearted <laughs> tunes. The late Whitney Houston. Spin them around. Yeah. <laughs> they're not doing that. I'm surprised he didn't do that. <laughs> but they're taking a while. Now, let's see the official. It's going to be a VCU's ball.
Not enough evidence to reverse the call, but it will stay with VCU as told to us by Bill Covington. So they reset the clock to 20 when the ball hit the rim. And a minute 16 left in the game. Rams need a basket and need it quick. Here's Johns. Draws contact and scores. Could have been an and one. Jackson has to be very careful. Johns with a career high 20 tonight. Seven point Jacksonville lead. Under a minute to go in the game. Caressi in for Jacksonville. And they're going to get a foul. And they're going to send Nolan back to the line. None called for the foul. And that was decent pressure. Jacksonville did a really good job of handling the pressure this time. They didn't get sped up. They, they were patient. Got the ball across half court, forcing VCU to foul. So two free throws for Nolan. He's perfect from the line tonight, 4-4. Four, four. And I think, I think that's going to be the biggest difference within this game. That run that Jacksonville went on, it wasn't as if VCU wasn't running good offense and getting fouled. They didn't convert on the opportunities they had, which built the lead, and it's hard to dig yourself out of, out, out that big of a hole. Nolan with 20 points along with eight assists and seven rebounds for Jacksonville, who are up nine. Here's Watkins for three. Still looking for his first made field goal. Caressi has it on the floor, and they're going to get a foul. Ah. Mike Rose thought he could get a jump ball, but instead it's going to be a foul. And if, if Ace has got the foul. And I think that you want to go for the foul. The, 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 the possession's in your favor. Yeah. I mean, you want to go for the, uh, for the tie-up. Caressi would have just sat there the full 10 seconds before he <laughs> could cross half court and wait until somebody fouled him. Caressi hits the first free throw. And again, Jacksonville has done such a great job of knocking down their free throws tonight. Caressi came in just two of five from the strike. Made those two. 73-62. VCU down 11. None for three. Oh, Osifar with a rebound. And that's the story of the night. VCU was shooting the three-point percentage, or, or the three-point at 18%. It's going to be hard to win games when you shoot the ball that poorly from behind the arc and miss your free throws. And Jacksonville, 9 of 18 from three, 18 of 20 from the line, 90%. And they're going to get out of here with a 73-62 win. Their biggest win to date this season as snaps VCU's four-game winning streak here at home. In a tough loss for VCU, they're, like I said, they're going to watch film. And they played a decent game, but just not stepping into your shots with confidence, not knocking down your free throws. And ultimately, that cost you the game. They missed 10 in an 11-point game. Huge difference. As Jacksonville wins the 73-62, we'll come back and wrap it up from the Seeker Center right after this. We're back here at the Seagull Center where the Jacksonville Dolphins come up from Florida and pick up a 73-62 win over VCU, outscoring the Rams by 11 in the second half after this game was tied at the break. Big games for Jaden Nunn, who had 14. Brandon Johns, a new career high for him with 20, as he was 9 of 12 from the free throw line. But the player to watch from Jacksonville, Kevion Nolan, with also 20 on the evening with 8 assists and 7 rebounds. And Mike Marsh, before he fouled out, he proved to be a big presence offensively for Jacksonville with 17 points and 9 rebounds along with 3 seals. Sean Robertson, along with Ed Nixon, a member of the 2011 Final Four team here, court side and uh, we thought the first 20 minutes were very very exciting but the second 20 minutes it seemed like in stretches it got away from BCU. Absolutely and we, we talked about it off camera it's not that the fact it's not the fact that they miss free throws it's when they miss free throws. They played well enough offensively outside of the three point line to stay within the game and keep the game close when they were having struggles but they missed so many free throw opportunities and every time they did it just seemed that Jacksonville 
came down the court and scored and widened that lead. We'd always say a stat will be the determining factor in this game, but BCU was 19 of 29 from the free throw line. This from a team that shot 70% collectively this season, while Jacksonville, who came in just below 69% from the line, were 18 of 20 from the free throw line. Huge disparity that turned out to be a big difference in the game. Absolutely. And that's not to discredit Jacksonville now. They had two guys that really showed up and played. Ke Ke Kevion Nolan completely led his team. When things got tough, he was able to get fouled and knock down free throws. When he was double teamed, he found the open player. And, and uh, what's my guy's name? Cook? Cook. Came off the bench and gave him 11 points, shot and scored above his average and hit big shot after big shot. So, I mean, hats off to Jacksonville. They played a very, very good game.